All right, guys, we're at the second last journal here. This one is uh, quite meaningful. It really coincides with the work that we did where you know, we, we, we had a look at who we were objectively based upon our myth, the story that we live by, the story we tell ourselves, and, uh, and the pain, the reason why we don't like where we're at, and the reason why we're doing this course, okay? Integrating trauma, given that we all experience trauma, and I'll get to that in a second, has to be one of the most important themes when it comes to psychotherapy and changing. Trauma is any experience, any fearful or frightened experience that led to some kind of uh, behavioral change or limiting belief or perception of ourselves. Oftentimes there is a feeling of helplessness where we actually have to take on the experience as though it's our own fault that this is happening or, or that it happened to us. And like we said in, in some of the initial coursework, that often happens when we're quite young. Now, if you can imagine that between the ages of seven, the part of the brain that's responsible for rationalizing and analyzing someone else's perspective hasn't quite yet formed. We live in a state of unicity with the, with the universe, which we are obviously all a part of. So everything is us because we haven't separated. We can't see beyond the self or you know, we can't see the objective realm, even though we can't right now. Um, when something bad happens to us, because we can't see someone else's viewpoint, so if someone slaps us in the face at four years old, at five years old, we don't yet have the ability to say, oh, they must have been having a bad day, or geez, what's up with them? Or, you know, where did that come from? We can't rationalize. So we take that experience as, I'm a bad person, I deserve to be slapped, I'm not worthy, A, B, and C. We literally haven't formed the parts in our brain that can that can do anything else. We become our traumatic experiences to, to the degree that we haven't transcended them. What happens? We're walking down a path and we fall into a pit. Okay, that's the traumatic experience, it's falling into a pit. If that still uh, has a hold on us to the degree that we believe what we learnt in that time, there's a part of our own psyche that hasn't ever gotten out of the pit. So you know, 70% of us might continue to walk along the path and we might be adults now. We might think we understand the world and we understand ourselves. There's still this emotional attachment to us that's still in the pit back when we were four years old, back when we were slapped, back when we believed that we weren't enough or deserve to be slapped or, you know, just literally inject your own traumatic experience. You know, I think in, in if, if nothing changes, we spoke about the idea that if you still have a memory that's painful or that you know, elicit some kind of feeling of fear that's beyond two years old. It's probably a, a strong, you know, idea there that it, it might have been traumatic for you. And when we're integrating trauma, we want to go back into those memories and we want to have a, we want to put a cognitive reframe on it. We want to have a think, okay, how did that experience, as traumatic as it was, lead to who I am today or lead to something good that happened today, okay? I want to give you uh, an experience uh, or an example, I suppose, that, um, that I was working with one of my own clients with. And, um, you know, she was she was traumatized because um, of something that happened to her at work. So so she was a nurse and there was a clearly a psychotic man that, um, you know, made some kind of you know, sexual remark or some kind of revolting remark towards her. And, you know, it was very intimidating because he was a lot bigger than her and it was deeply traumatic. Now, even though this happened to her when she was an adult, it kind of left some mark there still. Part of the work we did with the integration phase was to try to, after some time, you know, you know, dealing with the emotions, dealing with the feelings, understanding why they're there, understanding why it's okay for them to be there so that we don't disassociate the thinking brain and the feeling brain. After we did all that work, we started having a think about the integration phase. How did that experience lead to some kind of positive outcome? And very quickly as she was writing the journal, she was able to see how much more aware and how much better at her job she became because she knew how bad it could get, therefore how to act in those scenarios. So as painful as it was at the time, as traumatizing as it was at the time, she became a much better nurse as a result. And that's an incredibly realistic, authentic and positive spin to take on from the traumatic experience. So when you're writing this journal, I want you to have a think about what you wrote in the myth, what you wrote about in the pain journal, as well as any kind of other fearful or shameful, that's a big one, 
um, experience and how you can reframe that and have a look and you know almost kind of tell yourself that was a good thing that happened because of what it led to how much more resilient you are as an individual today, how much more you know about yourself and how you can adapt, how much more courageous and brave you are, how much more understanding and empathetic you are. These are very authentic ways that you can reframe some of the worst things that have ever happened to you. So be kind with yourself and enjoy the journal.